Hi everyone, Brightbone here and I'm back with another video and today we're going to take a look at a Covenant Grunt and how to reverse engineer the C2 Beacon server from the PowerShell that comes as part of a Covenant Grunt installation. So for those of you who are not familiar with Covenant, Covenant is a very interesting and new C2 framework, uh, very popular. It has a lot of different parts and pieces to it. It uses mostly C Sharp, coming up in popularity quite a bit, but it has launchers and grunts. A grunt is your typical C2 agent, much like a beacon. It's beacon program. And then the launcher is what you would use to launch that particular code. Uh, we're going to concentrate on a PowerShell launcher today, and we're going to reverse engineer that PowerShell in CyberChef, much like we did with Cobalt Strike. But uh, let's start with our listener here. So we'll take a look at our listener. Our Covenant listener here is an HTTPS listener. It's using the default certificate. We can see this is the connect address of our C2 server. And pay attention here, this is what we'll be looking for in our CyberChef reversal here in a little bit. Uh, our bind address, we're just allowing anything coming in on 443 to attach to the Covenant server by default from PowerShell. Uh, we're just using SSL as false. Uh, doesn't matter so much, but we're just using 443 as the port. So let's go ahead and we will generate a, a launcher here and we'll choose PowerShell. And then we can just choose generate and launch. Now you wanna make sure that your grunt is using the correct listener, which we are, we only have one. You're using the correct implant template which HTTP is typically a direct template. SMB can be a template for chaining them together. So chaining a grunt to another grunt who then communicate to the C2 backend. But we're gonna use grunt HTTP. We're gonna use cert pinning. These are all the defaults here. And then we do have a kill date in here, uh, just whenever we want that to be, if we wanna kill date, have a kill date. Now, We'll go ahead and select this way out. But then you can either run the PowerShell direct from the launcher or you can download it. And in this case, I want to download it and I want to use a download cradle uh, just to illustrate AMZ bypass and using a download cradle to get this into a system. So we'll go ahead and we'll download this. We'll save this file. And if I come over here to the command line and I do ls, you can see grunt HTTP dot ps1, right? If I cat that out, cat out grunt http dot ps1, you can see this is our PowerShell encoded command here. And there's some magic here that's being done that we're gonna reverse engineer here in a little bit. So if I clear the screen, I wanna turn this into a server now so I can have our uh, host download this. I'm just gonna use a Python method, so I'll just do Python 3 dash m hdp dot server. And that's going to automatically serve it on port 8000. I give it a port command to serve it on a different port. But in this case, I just want to serve it on port 8000. So I now am serving that file through Python. And as a matter of fact, let's just so we can keep our command line, we will put it as a background job. So if I do an and symbol here, it's going to go into the background, it's going to give me a job number and then it's gonna give me back my command line just in case I need it for something else. If I wanna see what job is running, I literally just type jobs and I can see in the background, I've got my HTTP server running here. So we have our HTTP server running that we can now pull down the payload with PowerShell. So we're gonna jump over to our hunter here and we're gonna reopen the command line just to make sure it's clean. So I will reopen CMD, command prompt, and we're on our Hunter system now. So we're gonna to need to use PowerShell to do our download cradle. Now a download cradle takes something and puts it directly into memory. It does not reside on disk. So I'm taking this PowerShell grunt and I'm putting it right into memory. There's no file on disk for anything. So anything that comes through with this stager, anything that is used with this PowerShell process, it's only a memory. It is not on the box itself. So let's go ahead and we will do PowerShell. And just to illustrate this, 
I will do our download cradle. And it's going to most likely get caught by AMSI. AMSI, Anti-Malware Systems Interface, is a hook into Windows Defender. Uh, so it's probably going to tell me this is malware. Well, we're going to slip by AMSI. We've done it in a previous video, but we'll do it again here just to illustrate how you would get a beacon onto a host that AMSI is protecting. Uh, as you'll notice, Defender, if we take a look here, Defender is enabled. So if we go to Manage Settings here under Virus and Threat Protection, Real-Time Protection is on. So we're going to slip by Real-Time Protection. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this, and it's probably going to bark at us. Oh, I am missing a quote. Just redo this grunt. HTTP.ps1. And now we can see the script contains malicious content and has been blocked by our antivirus software. Well. Let's fix that problem. We don't want this to be blocked by antivirus software. So we can slip by AMSI. I've shown this before. We can use AMSI.fail. And we'll generate a payload here. And what we're going to generate is something with AMSI scan buffer patch here, Rasta Mouse's version. Do not copy the top of this. AV vendors are hooking into that. So you want to make sure below the comment, get all of this code. And then we're going to take this over to our hunter station and we're going to try to run it. Now, this may take a few attempts, so bear with me. And we got lucky. Worked on the first attempt this time. So we now should be able to run our download cradle. So I'll clear the screen here just to make it easier to see. And we're going to paste back in our grunt to see if it will go. And this time I'm going to get the Quotation in there, correct, before pasting it in. And there we go. So this is IEX new object NetWeb client download string. And then the URL that we're going to be downloading this from. And IEX stands for Invoke Expression. So I could use Invoke Dash Expression here instead of IEX. But if you're ever going to create a rule looking for a download cradle, make sure you look for Invoke Expression or IEX in your download cradle syntax. So let's go ahead and run this now. And looks like it ran. And if we come back over here to our covenant, we now see Grunt has joined up here in the right hand corner. Hunter Station has been activated. So if we go over here into our grunts, you can now see we have a grunt, and it is our Hack Lab Hunter Workstation, Hunter Station. Now I can interact with this from here. Also, if you start from the grunts menu and you just click over here, it'll take you into this. Now you have certain commands you can run. It does give you an idea of what these commands are. So a lot of really cool things that can be run from here. Seatbelt's a great one to kind of figure out what where you are and what you're doing in a network, where the host has issues. But we're just going to run a simple who am I just to prove that our grunt is working. Oops, I didn't tab complete that. So tab complete does work here. We'll do who am I. And in a minute, it should, once it's tasked, we should see the grunt come back and give us some information. And it tells me who I am, HackLab Hunter. So we know for a fact that the grunt is on the system and working through PowerShell. So we've defeated Windows Defender. We now have our foothold in the environment. So we could go further with the attack here, but let's take a look at the defense part of this. We want to be able to catch a Covenant grunt as it's being installed onto a system with PowerShell in this method. So let's take a look at our Elastic Sin. And we're going to go to Discover. And I'll take that query out. What we're going to first look for is event code 4104. So 4104, that is Windows Script Block Logging. So anytime a PowerShell script is run on a host with script block logging, 
we have the script block text that was run. Sometimes we even have the first pass of Base64 decoded, like we did in the example we did with Cobalt Strike. But in this case, we don't have the first pass decoded. We've got a whole bunch of different code in here that is Base64. And also some other things have been done to it. It's been deflated. So we'll we'll take a look at that, at the reversal of this in a minute. But first, we want a sim rule to catch this. Well, where you see this IO compression deflate stream, this is very uncommon. And this can be a telltale sign of a covenant grunt being used this way. You may get some false positives here. Not many scripts use deflate, but this one, you, you could go as far as grabbing the entire top of this new object IO memory stream SV, so on and so forth, and regex for that if you want a little bit more accurate rule. But you just if you just grab this deflate stream, you're probably going to catch this every time it's run with any, any defaults. So I went ahead and pre-created a rule here based on this. So if we go over to alerts, I chose the wrong menu, security alerts, not observability alerts. You can see we have Covenant Grunt PowerShell critical. So if I take a look here and I investigate in timeline, and actually I'm gonna do this differently. Let's just, we'll just pop it open and go view all fields because it's gonna be easier to see. If we come down here, we can see here is the Covenant Grunt, and we literally just alerted on that deflate stream. So if I go over here into the rule, and we take a look at that. You can see the rule syntax here of event code 4104 and message star IO compression deflate stream star. So this is your rule. This is a very simple rule. You can go much further. But this is a good, simple rule, easy way to catch uh, Covenant Grunt via PowerShell uh, in a default syntax. So if we if we come back over into just our Discover dashboard and we just run that query, we will see it will only catch this a few times. Now I've run this a few times in this sim today, so we got to make sure our timeline's right. And yeah, you can see I've run it three times today. So. If I expand this though, you can see the script block text right here, all of this long script block text. So this is what we need to reverse engineer to find our C2 beacon source. Finding our C2 beacon source is exactly what we wanna do as incident handlers, incident responders. We wanna go eliminate this from our network because this is where the bad guy is going to. We wanna block this at our firewall. We wanna do something with it. So we're gonna double click this. Well, I'll just go up here. Select all the text. And we're going to copy this over into CyberChef like we did with the Cobalt Strike Beacon. I'm going to take and paste it into input. Now, when reading this log, it should key you into some things that are going on with it. Where well, you see new object IO compression deflate stream, that means at some point we're going to need to inflate the stream. It's being deflated before it is base 64 So that deflation has to be re-inflated. And there's a command in CyberChef called raw inflate that we will use. But first thing we want to do is a regex. So we want a regex for our base 64. So we'll do regular expression first. And we will do the typical method you have seen me use before. And that is A to Z, A to Z, 9 plus, and then 40 comma in brackets. So this is a good regex to find base64. So we have now found all of the base64 in here. And I eh, didn't get it all that time. So let's go a little larger. We'll go 50. Now we have all of the, well, still. Did I do something wrong here? Ah, I needed a space. So there we go. 
Now we have all of the base 64. So we want to only display this in our output. So instead of doing highlight matches, we're going to do list matches. Now it's only displaying the base 64. So next step we're going to take is we're going to unbase 64 this. So if we go, we'll go from base 64. And now you can start seeing something that looks like a bunch of broken characters. And this is because we need to now inflate this because it was deflated up here with the with the compression. So now we're going to do raw inflate. If I can grab it correctly. And now we're doing raw inflate. And now notice you're starting to see some things that look like a program. Here is your magic byte MZ. Here is your this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Now, if you look through here, this is almost like doing strings on it. There's a lot of data in here. The simple cheater way is if you look really closely in here, there is an IP address. One other thing you can do here to make it easily readable is remove null bytes. So if we remove null bytes, go ahead and put that in there. It just makes it a lot easier to read. But there is IP addressing in here, and we literally can just pull it out. It's, it's technically right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but there it is. And you can just simply do extract IP addresses here. So if you do extract IP addresses, it'll pull it right out. And there's your IP. You can also do extract domains instead. Let's see if it will pull. In most cases, this would be a domain and not an IP. And here are the domains. Anything that looks like a domain, it will extract. But in, in our case, it is just an IP address because that's the IP address of the C2 server. So there's your reversal. We now know where our C2 beacon lives, and we can go knock that down. We can prevent communication to that, thus knocking the grunt down. So if I block this IP, 192.168.136, dot 37 between the host that's communicating to that Kali Linux box, it's going to knock the grunt offline. And that's the reversal of a covenant grunt. Once again, thank you for viewing this. Uh, please like, comment, uh, share. Uh, the, doing these videos is a lot of fun for me, so I want to continue the practice. And liking it really helps. So thank you very much.